Hello everyone. In this energy talk, I would like to talk about heat pumps. In the previous energy talk, I explained the importance of electrification as a demand side approach. I mentioned that we can reduce energy consumption by electrification. In other words, let electricity do the work without burning fossil fuels. And at the same time, we can significantly reduce CO2 emissions by generating electricity from renewables and nuclear that do not emit carbon dioxide. Today, let's study heat pumps, which are the key to promoting electrification. First, let me explain the principle of heat pumps. A heat pump works by pumping heat from the atmosphere and transferring it through heat exchange. Please take a look at this illustration. Heat exists in the air. The heat is captured in a refrigerant. By compressing it, it is made hotter and the heat is exchanged inside the room to warm the room. The temperature of the refrigerant is lowered by releasing the heat, and the temperature is further lowered when the refrigerant is depressurized by an expansion valve. This cold refrigerant again absorbs heat from the atmosphere. By repeating this process, the heat from the atmosphere is drawn up and delivered inside the room. This illustration shows the principle of heating a room, but when cooling, it rotates in the opposite direction, drawing heat from the room and releasing it to the outside. In this way, heat pumps use the two characteristics of heat. That is, heat moves from a warmer place to a cooler place, and that compressing air raises its temperature and depressurizing it lowers its temperature. The only part of this process that uses electric power is the part that operates the compressor. In this illustration, by pumping six heat from the atmosphere, one electrical energy is used to deliver seven heat energy to the room. The performance of a heat pump is expressed in terms of COP, coefficient of performance. And the heat pump in this illustration has a COP of seven. When heating with fossil fuels, no matter how efficient, it will never produce more than 100% of the heat. But with a heat pump, 700% or seven times the heat energy can be obtained. This same principle can be used for water heating. Thus, if you use a heat pump to electrify your heating, cooling, and hot water supply, you can save a lot of energy by doing so. Heat pumps are not a new technology by any means. In fact, I have been promoting all electrified homes for 30 years when I worked for an electric power company. Induction heaters are used for cooking heat, but all electrified homes use heat pumps for water heating and air conditioning. The performance of heat pumps at that time was around COP3 but they have evolved over the years and are now quite efficient, capable of COP7 as shown in this illustration. In the case of thermal power generation, electricity reaches only about 40% of its, of its original energy content due to generation efficiency and transmission losses. But if a COP7 heat pump produces heat, the heat energy will be seven times that amount, or 280% of the original energy. In other words, 
It is a magical device that produces three times as much energy. Furthermore, if power generation from renewable energy source expands in the future, energy will be generated seven times as much because there is no loss of power generation as with thermal power. Until now, electricity has been considered not good at producing heat. And certainly, electric heater are not efficient. Today, however, heat pumps can produce heat below 100 degrees Celsius several times more efficiently than burning oil or gas. Furthermore, heat pumps can now produce heat above 100 degrees and then up to 200 degrees Celsius. Because it uses heat from the atmosphere, heating efficiency naturally decreases when temperatures are low, but thanks to its improved efficiency, it can now be used for heating and hot water supply, even in the cold region such as Hokkaido. Heat used in homes and in buildings is for cooling, heating, and hot water supply. So 100 degrees Celsius heat is sufficient. Heat needed in factories, for example, is much hotter or requires steam. So how much of Japan's overall heat demand can be met by heat pumps? To find out, we need to look at how much heat is needed in Japan. So in the next energy talk, we will consider the potential of heat pumps. Please watch the next issue and let's think about the potential of heat pumps. That's all for today. Stay curious about energy. Thank you very much.